The small village of St Fillins was the starting point for this evening. St Fillins is located on the banks of Loch Erne and has plenty of parking spots along the waterfront. And just over the road from the laybys is a starting point for the walk up to this viewpoint. The small hike takes about 30 to 45 minutes to complete and does have steep areas but overall a very easy walk. It does follow a forest slip track all the way up to the top. It's built for cars so it's easy enough to access. The skies were forecast to be clear for a few days so I took the opportunity to get out and shoot the, a shot that I've found whilst walking about during lockdown. I've quickly just jumped up this hill. Uh, it's near, well it's Loch Ern. I don't know what the hill is called, but it's right beside Loch Ern. Hopefully the mic's blocking out the wind because it's a wee bit windy up here. Um, I'm just two minutes away from like a, a bench and I'm going to stay up there for a few hours and try and get Orion down Loch Ern. I don't know if you can see Loch Ern in the background. It's sort of twilight just now, it's pitch black to the naked eye. Um, and the ISS is going to go over in the next 10 minutes, so I'm going to quickly get to the summit and get set up. I'm going to get a star trail, Orion, over Loch Ern, so hopefully it's going to be a good wee evening for me. I've scouted this location, when did I scout it? Back in January, during lockdown, you know, there was nothing else to do but go walking in Perthic and Ross, so I just went walking and I found this location, so we've got clear skies, so I'm going to get that shot and hopefully bag it. I'll see you at the top anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm at Loch Erne. That's Loch Erne just down there. You can just see Orion in the night sky. It's just kind of twilight. It's just going to darkness. Now. Oh, there's a shooting star. Uh, the wind's actually a wee bit windy up here, so I'm kind of uh, covering my mic. But yeah, you can kind of see my composition for tonight, which is pretty simple. It's just going to be Orion over Loch Erne. Um, yeah, as I said, I looked out this location about two months ago and now finally I've got clear skies to try and capture it. The ISS, as I said, is going over in a few minutes, so I'm going to get that live on camera. I'm not going to take pictures because they don't really look that good and it's still too bright for uh, the IS ISS to pop through through an image. So you'll be able to see it live on camera, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it took about 45 minutes hike up here and yeah, I'm excited because it's going to be clear skies, crystal clear skies, so I've got, I don't have to worry about any clouds or anything, I just have to get the, the shot. So, it's going to be a good shot, I think. You can just make out all the stars as well, Orion, Sirius maybe behind me, I don't know if you can see that. It's going to be a good wee night, so hopefully, I'm going to show you, I'm going to set up a time lapse as well, because I want to get a star trail over Loch Erne as well. So I've got my Canon 1300D and just the normal kit lens. I'm just going to set that on time lapse, I'll show you that. And I'll, yeah, shoot that, I'll just leave that running for about 2-3 hours, however long I'm up here. So yeah, luckily it's mild as well, so I can stay up here for a while and I've got no plans for tomorrow, so. But yeah, I'll show you the ISS hopefully any minute now, and then the time lapse, so. Yeah. Right, so any second now, we should start seeing the ISS. Oh, I see the ISS. Hey, <laughs> uh, right, sorry. Um, it's over there. It's just going under Rigel. You see, it's not very bright. Um, it's only magnitude zero minus zero point eight, so it's not really bright. But it's just going over, say, under Orion just now. 
Uh, it's moving very, very slowly, but it's not bright at all. But it's just good to see the ISS. Every now and then it's heading over to Sirius. I believe you can see Sirius. I don't know how tight that angle is. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, you can see it. It'll move around like that. There we go. See, it's just... It's heading... There we go. I'll pop a wee arrow where it is. Hopefully so you see it, but you should just see a moving star. That's all it looks like, just a moving star, really. Right, it's just about to go on top of Sirius now. Hey, but it's not very bright at all, is it? Normally it's really, really bright, but it's not bright today. So. There you go, just over Sirius there. Hey, it's getting a wee bit brighter, actually. But yeah, that's the ISS for you for tonight. It's always good to see that. I was really keen to get a star trail over this viewpoint, so setting up a time lapse is always my first priority on these adventures so that I maximise the length of the star trail. For star trails I always roughly go for at least two and a half hours to give the stars enough time to make a decent trail in the sky. The longer the better for star trails really. I took two 45 second exposures first so that the foreground was nicely lit and then later blended the foreground with the star trail image to create the cleanest image I possibly could. Just for reference, this is what I have to hike up a hill all the time. Two, tr two tripods and a bag full of two cameras, two intervalometers, loads of batteries, uh, filters, lenses, two lenses for each camera just in case anything. But yeah, this is what I hike normally every time I go uh, taking pictures outside. It doesn't weigh too much, but you know, after a long hike, it does start to weigh a bit. Uh, but yeah. That's just, that's all my luggage pretty much. There's a hand warmer on the bench as well. But yeah, it's not too bad. I'm not, try and keep it nice and light. So, not too bad at all. Look what I've just found. Look, there's a tr train of Elon Musk satellites. Hey! Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, they just keep coming and coming. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's not awesome, astrophotography wise, but you know what I mean. I've never, I've never actually seen them in the sky before. Jesus, there's loads of them. I'm going to try and get a picture. Whoa, another one. Oh, another one. Have you seen them all count? Just awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, they just keep coming and coming, don't they? Bloody hell, that's cool, actually. And that's the end of them there. Yeah. Anyway, that was pretty cool. I've not seen that before. Yeah, that's some stop there. That was pretty cool though. But yeah, this, hopefully the sky's not like that forever. Um, hopefully technology can... Uh, ...hide them a wee bit. There's a view down. Look at that, beautiful. Right, I'm going to shut up and get some pictures because this is just too damn pretty just now. Right here, so I've just done my photography. Um, I had to really concentrate on that, so I didn't really shoot anything because I wanted to, these pictures to turn out, turn out perfect. So I had to do loads of exposures and foreground exposure, dark frames and stuff. So I'll take you through all the shots that I've roughly been taking. So these are just previews and they're just videos. Um, yeah, you can roughly see 
the lock in the foreground and then doing loads of foreground images and then the Stargo filter, Alan Wall Stargo filter using that to, for the things for the stars to pop and there's the bench, the famous bench up here zodiacal light as well so loads of pictures with that uh, and over here, I'll turn that off just now, so I've really been focused on that so I've not been showing how to uh, do the photography but um, it's, you know, 15 second exposures, it's not rocket science I've been just working on that I know. Absolutely delighted with my first real attempt at a panorama at night, as I always found these tricky, as my wide angle lens distorts quite a lot around the sides, making it hard to blend. Luckily this time I figured it out and managed to capture Orion just on the left, the zodiacal light just in the middle above the foreground, and the Andromeda Gal Galaxy on the right, all in one image. Brilliant. And over here, if I just go do 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 do, is I'm trying not to blind it too much. Uh, my time lapse, time lapse is going quite nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to block the lens. Um, it's how many images have I took? What does it say? Oh, I've got an infinite, so uh, I don't want to disturb it too much. Battery's going on that. Hold on, I'll go to my face. Yeah, so I've been doing the time lapse. I'm just going to leave that. I'm leaving that as long as possible. I just want to get the cleanest star trail I've ever got before because it's such a good composition. I just want to get the cleanest, best star trail I've ever got because star trails get good attention. So I wanted to get that. So I'm just leaving that. Um, I've got a hand warmer on the lens as well because I didn't want the lens to fog up. But yeah, that's. But yeah, that's just the usual setup that I've been using, Sony A7S, Samyang, fil uh, Samyang 24 1.4 and the 14mm 2.8. I've been using that for all my shots. Uh, right, I'll show you the view that I've got because I can see the zodiacal light with my naked eye. And that's pretty cool to see on camera, so I'll go to the, the Sony and show you around the night sky because we've got dark skies. Position you can see me. Right, hopefully you can see me. Um, so. Oh, it's getting cold now. Uh, you can't really see the zodiacal light. It is just over there, but you can't really see. You could have probably seen it earlier, but I was shooting because it's only visible really um, one or two hours after sunset. So it's kind of past that now, but it was over there near Pleiades. Uh, but you can see Orion setting, and that's it pretty much setting for the year now. We're, we've only got a few more weeks of it, maybe a month. And then that's it, definitely gone for the season. So I'm making the most of it just now. Oh, getting colder now. Scotland's going to get a bit of Arctic air for April, so I'm looking, kind of looking forward to that. It means clear skies. But yeah, that's really it for for um, tonight. I've just shot Orion, and I've tried to get a panorama of the winter Milky Way side, so Orion all the way up to Cassiopeia. Um, so we'll see if that turns out. I've never really done panoramas before, so I'll try it. I'll be working hard on it on the laptop when I get home. Um, so we'll see if it if it stitches together. But I'm a newbie to panoramas, so it was good to see the Starlink satellites as well. Elon, Elon Musk's Starlink satellites. I've never seen them before. So it was about 20, 30 of them. That was mental. So that was quite cool to see. But yeah, it is getting a bit cold now, and I've got. I don't know, maybe half an hour left on the 
the star trail and then that'll do me for the night so hope you enjoyed this video i'll pop all the results up on the screen the star trails and the you know the, the images so hopefully you like them and hopefully you enjoyed this video it's maybe a bit rushed because i've not really done much i've just been concentrating on getting the pictures because i want these pictures to be perfect but yeah hopefully a few more clear skies in the next month need to get the milky way before it disappears and then that's us into summer so that'll be noctilucent clouds and planets and just moonrise moon sets um so yeah but no i've enjoyed tonight it's been good it's been a good wee hike I've enjoyed the hike, it's a, I don't know, half an hour hike back down. So, yeah, so yeah, it's not bad at all. So thank you very much for watching, cheers.